Dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my ways, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through, through my, my fault, through, through my fault, fault through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I have accepted the real perversion, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life in the last day. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to the people of the world. We bless you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, help the king. O God Almighty Father. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You are the Lord and the Lord. You are the Lord and the Most High, Jesus Christ. Where well, the God is spirit and the glory of the God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, protect all of those who help in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and rather with you as our ruler and guide we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever in here. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the midst of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. A reading from the first book of Kings. 
theme of the reading is, you have asked for a descending judgment for yourself. Reading. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, Ask what you would like me to give you. Solomon replied, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in succession to David my father. But I'm a very young man, unskilled in leadership. Your servant finds himself in the midst of these people of yours that you have chosen. A people so many, its numbers cannot be counted or reckoned. Give your servant a heart to understand how to descend between good and evil. For who can govern this people of yours that is so great? It pleased the Lord that Solomon should have asked for this. Since you have asked for this, the Lord said, and not asked for long life for yourself or riches or the death of your enemies, but have asked for a discerning judgment for yourself. Here and now I do what you ask. I give you a heart wise and shrewd as none before you has had, and none will have after you. The word of the Lord. The response shall be, Lord, how I love your Lord. Respond. Lord, how I love your Lord. Lord, how I love your Lord. Lord, how I love your Lord. than silver and gold. Lord, how I love your Lord. Lord, how I love your Lord. Let your Lord be ready to console me by your promise to yourself. Let your love come to me and I shall be for your Lord is my daylight. Lord, how I love you, Lord. Lord, how I love you, Lord. That is why I love your commands more than fine as gold. That is why I rule my life by your graces. I hate first ways. Lord, Son. 
so that his son might be the eldest of many brothers. He called those intended for him this, those he called he justified, and with those he justified, he shared his glory. The wealth of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we stand for God's proclamation? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. again, goes off happy, sells everything he owns and buys the fuel. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he owns and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea that brings in a haul of all kinds of fish. When it is full, the fisherman hauls it ashore, then sitting down, they collect the good ones in a basket and throw away those that are of no use. This is how it will be at the end of time. The angels will appear and separate the wicked from the just to throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be whipping and grinding of teeth. Have you understood all this? They said, yes. And he said to them, well then, every scribe who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out from his store things both new and old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, once again, you're welcome to God's banquet of word. Today, I think I might think to try to say that God wants us to be wise and that wisdom 
to be free to act. Voluntaries, voluntaries. That God is not a compeller. God does not push us against our will. But he wants us to ask with his wisdom. We can see the first reading. God always likes to put something like the test, but the test is just in your own interest. Take for instance the time of Abraham. Abraham was asked, sacrifice your son for me. It's just a kind of test, promotive test. The test was promotional in the sense that if you succeed, you will be elevated. Now I come to understand why James said that temptation is necessary and important and very good for us all Christians. James chapter 1 verse 12. Happy are those who are tested and uh, who scale the truth, the, 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 the test. That if you are tested, tempted, and you pass, you are automatically promoted. Let us take Jesus himself. In Matthew 4, verse 2 to 11, then what did he do? He was tempted. 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and prayer, he came out and was tempted by the devil to turn the stone into bread, to jump from the sky, to kneel down for him, and the devil never succeeded. And when the devil was put into shame with three zero to nothing, the angels came and ministered to Christ. It is an elevation. Temptation is necessary. They don't fall into it. Temptation is not a sin. Abraham was a kind of tempted. Go and sacrifice your son for me. And he did. Was allowed to the extreme exercise of faith. When he knew he was about to strike, he said, Now I see you're serious. Now take your son home. You see? From that day, he changed from Abraham to Abraham, the father of faith till date. If you are testing and tempted, you just fall away like a feather blown away by the wind. Job was tempted, and he scaled through. And the scripture says he became richer than he was three times over. Job 42 from verse 8 to 10. But he was tempted beyond repair, beyond normalcy, beyond capability, beyond the shock absorber. He was an extraordinary man. Now, today, God allowed Solomon to be tested. And Solomon was tested and tempted. Just in his little capacity. Tell me what I'll do for you. And what did he do? He simply said, Look, before I strike this, check it. In the second reading, he said, God allow our things for the good of people of God. That is the temptation. That is the test. God allows everything for the good of children of God. You see, so he allows certain things to happen for your own blessing, in your own interest. Check an instance of St. Paul's life in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 8 down to 10. Paul was tempted with a kind of sickness that was very eating. It ate up his personality, his strength. It almost drained his faith. He prayed three times for God to heal him. What did God reply on the third prayer point? God told Paul, stop prayer, stop that kind of prayer. Don't ever try to ask me to kill you. Ah, what? What do you mean? I'm dying. And unfortunately, the, the, the most, uh, the irony there is that while Paul was sick, others would come around and touch him and got healed. 
If he was so tired, he used his handkerchief, just like this, touch them, and they would be here. But his soul was weighing him down, he was dying. Three, his eyes were bulging, pains all over. He never saw that kind of thing. Cracking body. Then he prayed first time, God kept calling. Prayed second time, God kept calling. Prayed third one with sweat and blood. And God opened his mouth from ocean of silence. Paul, stop that prayer now. Never you pray again. I am aware you are passing that crucible. I allow the enemy to pinch you so that you will not be proud. So that my power will be great in you. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. In that town, I say, never bring more sickness. I'm now ready. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, everything will get onto good of children of God. If only you pray. Tell God your problem, tell him, but don't insist that you change it. Don't insist that you change your cross because your cross will be a blessing to you. You already ordained from the spiritual realm. You see, uh, somebody came to me and said, Father, this is your kind of gift. I don't pray for it. Even if I'm paid one million naira every week, I will not walk this kind of you don't eat, you don't sleep, you don't rest, you don't do this. I say every month's capacity is destined from the uh, beyond beyond from the yonder world. So that's what we're saying, you know, everything will get onto your good. And Paul never insisted, and Paul was the strongest, he was very powerful, in fact, that he rose up to 13 episodes. Hey, you know, and taught the whole world, known them well, and made a great and great convert. So, if he had insisted to be healthy, maybe he wouldn't do all those things. God said, My power weighs heavily on you when you are in that condition. So, so many things work onto the good of children. If you watch it well, this COVID 19 has its own blessing. Don't condemn it totally. God has something to achieve through it. There is no reason that happens on this day that has not already been spiritually designed. Whether it is negative or what, it must turn out for the good of children of God. Child, say I said it. This thing, COVID, is turning out for the good of children of God. God uses to cancel some things, to spot some things, to teach something, to bring us back and uh, put it aright, knock us aright, because some people are knocking us, some people are dreaming. He put us aright with this kind of experience, very harsh, hard, challenging experience. COVID-19, unseen before. A world, entire world accident. But it has a demand on that tone. This is what you learn in second reading. God walketh unto the good of the children of God. God walketh unto the good of children of God. Amen? Amen. So, at this point, you can see that God in His infinite mercy is doing something here. He's teaching us something here. He doesn't push us against our will. That's what I say. Solomon, make a choice. And he said, My Lord and my God, I'm a child, and I'm taking up the seat of my father, and I am not capable to do that, and because of that, you see, I need just wisdom. That should God, because God is Himself wisdom. We hear the story of St. Thomas Aquinas that he wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote about God so voluminous, so voluminous. He wrote a lot about God, and what happened? One day, he even wrote this evening benediction songs, and that. Uh, one day, God met him and said, Listen, Thomas, what do you want me to do for you? And uh, Thomas dropped his pen and checked forward just like Solomon. He said, Give me yourself. St. Thomas. And it was said, The little Jesus standing on his table, disappeared and went into him. And that's why he was the greatest theologian of the church. He said, ask for wisdom. If you will, it were you and I, look at it. Now let me ask you, 
If you are a businessman, I ask you, what do you want God to do for you? Oh my God. Expansion of business empire. You, civil servant, what do you want? Promotion to 16 level, level 16 or more. You, student, what do you want me to do? Let me be passing on my exams. You, young man, what do you want me to do? Let me be a billionaire, like this, like that. You, young girl, what do you want? Better husband, better husband. You, mama and papa, oh, that my, bless, my children will be blessed, that all of them will be doctor, business man, booming and all that. This is what we'll be asking. Nobody ever will think about wisdom. This is unfair. But look at those who ask a right. They ask a right. As soon as Abraham did that, God bless him. As soon as Paul admitted that, God bless him. As soon as Solomon said wisdom, God said, even those you did not ask, I'm going to load them unto you. Please. It is said in James chapter 4, verse 3, we ask and we do not get because we do not know how to ask a right. That's why he referred us to Romans chapter 8, verse 22, down to 24, he says, listen, down to 26, he says, we do not know how to pray when the Spirit assumes us, enters us, and prays in the language which the God heard and hears. God heard, hears. So, I'm telling you now, ask the Spirit to put wisdom in you to be able to do the right thing. All you leaders of the world today, have you made any request? Have you asked for wisdom? You just soon got on the sea. Soon got on the sea. Without wisdom, you want to rule with empty hand, you want to rule with your power. You, that's why you become tyrannical. That's why you make you mistakes here and there. That's why you listen to people instead of listening to the spirit. You must, even if no matter what you are, you're a president, you're a governor, you're a minister, you're a this, whatever city you're occupying, anywhere you are ahead, go back today and ask for wisdom. And you do not make a mistake. Ask for wisdom. We are lacking wisdom. We are asking extra jam. Extra jam. You are asking outside the right track. So I am calling your attention today. Go back and ask for wisdom. All this mistake we do are because we do not ask God the right thing. We make a mistake a lot. Because we do not ask God the right thing. The scripture says they say it. That we make a mistake because we do not know what the scripture is saying. What do, do I mean by scripture? How do you become wise? Can you read for me Psalm 111 verse 10? And also uh, Proverb 9. How do we become wisdom? If wisdom is the key to this success in life, how do we start? Yes. Psalm 111 verse 10. Yeah. The way to become wise is to honor the Lord. Yes. He gives sound judgment to all who obey his commands. He gives sound judgment to all who obey his commands. Sound judgment. I will now lead you to that. Sound judgment. You cannot judge soundly without knowing God. You will always be making a mistake here and there. Know God and know yourself. It is God who will help you to know yourself and conquer yourself. A word was said by one uh, 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 sage that the strongest man on earth, do you know who he is? He who conquers himself. If you conquer yourself, you are the strongest man. But you look to whom to conquer now? Conquer yourself. Yes, and you cannot conquer yourself unless you know God. And God will help you to conquer yourself. And then you can conquer the world. Yes. Get also uh, Proverb 9. Proverb 9. How to. It's not an ordinary statement. If you want to be really wise. Because God is wisdom. Himself is wisdom. Yes. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Yes. To be wise you must first have reverence for the Lord. Reverence for the Lord. Reverence for the Lord. To be wise you must have reverence for the Lord. If you know the Holy One, 
you have understanding. You, if you know the Holy One, you have the understanding. That goes to corroborate with what Jesus said in John 17, from verse 5 downwards. He said, Father, I have taught them who you are, whom I am, who you sent. In fact, they have the eternal wisdom and knowledge. Yes. Wisdom will add years to your life. Wisdom will add years to your life because you will not be making a mistake. Much mistake that will cost your life. You are the one who will profit if you have wisdom. You are the one profiting, not to another person. It is for your own a personal edification. And if you reject it, you are the one who will suffer. Accept it and be promoted, reject it and be demoted, and suffer it. Because a foolish man always falls into several uncountable problems, even the ones set by the enemy. You keep on rolling yourself. Move that to verse uh, 10 down to 11 of it and listen to what stupidity you can do. Yes? Proverbs chapter. That same place, verse 11 of it. 9, 11. Go down. Yes? Proverbs 9, 11. Mm -hmm. The wisdom will add you years to your life. You are the one who will profit. Stupidity is like hmm. a loud, ignorant, shameless woman. Loud, ignorant, shameless, loud woman. She sees at the door of her house and on. I think it has just heard it. She sees like a wall. A hound sitting on the road, beckoning on her, shamelessly. So that's how stupidity looks in ensemble. So don't allow stupidity in your life. How do we start moving? How do we start moving? Look, God wants us to be wise. If I may tell you, that is why Jesus said in Matthew 10, 16, be wise as serpent and gentle as dove. As by Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13, it says, the ten wise virgins, ten virgins, five foolish ones, five wise ones, and he commended the wise ones who had the extra oil. God needs wisdom in your head. If we go to Luke chapter 16, verse 1 to 15, he says, The shrewd servant. This manager mismanaged the wealth of his master and he came for account and he could not. He discovered, he told him, go and take stock. He knew that very well he was being sacked. So on time, he went into the world and began to make friends. Uh -huh. Okay, sir, how much are you paying my master? 100 bucks. come and write 50. They didn't know he was setting a trap for friendship. Hey, how much are you paying my master? 80, come and write 50. And say, agree like that. Hey, how much are you going to 200 bags? Come and write 100. Shh. Do you hear me? They never knew he was making So Jesus commended this man because of the wisdom. The argument. He said, the people of the world are wiser than you and I. That is, this is when go back and read it very well. That is Luke 16, verse 1 to 15. The shrewd manager who mismanaged and was wise enough to make friends. He told himself, I will not be able to shamefully beg around. I'm not a good farmer. I cannot just what do I do? What does he cracked his brain? Apply the wisdom and then discover that he should go and make friends on time. Jesus commended him, not because of his shrewdness, but because of his wisdom to think ahead, which he asks me and you to be wiser than this man. Children of God, if you don't know God, you cannot be with God. So I'm calling your attention now to be wise. God is asking you to be wise. To be wise. You must be wise. That is how do you start the wisdom? Malito Korobia, Lito Ego Chineke. Malito Korobia, Lito Ego Chineke. Malita Bobobia, Lito Ego Chineke. Malita Bobobia, Lito Ego Chineke. Okorobia, Habobia, Malito Korobia, Lito Ego Chineke. So, what I mean is that the beginning of wisdom, be you a boy, be you a girl, is to first of all know God. 
Go to Psalm 1. He said, Do you want to be prosperous? Go and align with those who know God. Dissociate with foolish people because they will put you into trouble. Can you read for me Proverbs 15, verse 2? And see, <coughs> foolishness is, is a bulk of problem. Don't be unwise, rather be wise. Yes, and if you read that, you go back to Matthew chapter 6. Have you read the Proverbs 15? And you listen to it. It's very succinct. Yeah? Proverbs 15 verse. Yes. Two. Verse 2. Yes. When, when wise people speak, mm -hmm. they make knowledge attractive. Good. But they, stupid people spout nonsense. Oh my God. This is direct. Proverbs 15 verse. When the foolish man stands out to, to talk, trouble everywhere. People will fight and they will sigh and they will say, oh no, this foolish man, get out of this place. They will cause more trouble. But when the wise man stands up to sing, a sage, say everybody keep quiet, listen, listen. It is practical in our, our, our own experience. Proverbs 15 2. When the wise stands up to speak, oh my God, he said he makes knowledge attractive. But when the stupid stands up to speak, he speaks nonsense, spout nonsense. Vomit nonsense because it will not coordinate it. This is why you don't know God, you will not be let the spirit help you to be coordinated. Get to Matthew 6 33 and see what is there. Yes. So don't allow yourself for the change. Yes. What does it say? Matthew 6, verse 33. Yes. Instead, be concerned about everything else with the kingdom of God and with his righteousness. You see it. And every other thing shall be added unto you. You see, we pursue jara. Jara o jara o na jara. Everything na jara. Every other thing na jara. God na head o. Na him you go pursue. Catch God first and you cut everything. I'm telling you a simple thing. I'll tell you from my own life experience and story. As I am like this, I will tell you what I know and what I passed through. So, think about God first, capture God first, every other thing, your wisdom, your knowledge, everything, power, where everything is within this power and domain. That is the, the, the Vedan Shamu, the totalitarian, the, the, the compendium of wisdom and knowledge and power and wealth, money and written is in God. He is the source. Amen. Amen. So I'm calling attention, go back to God. Go back to God. And that is what we're telling today. Look, if you read Proverbs 8.22, that's something there. Could you? Let us see why you should pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. Pursue wisdom. I will tell you. Proverbs chapter 8, yes. verse 22. Yes. The Lord created me first of all, the first of his work long ago. Hmm. I was made in the very beginning of the first, before the world began. You see, before the world began, wisdom has been created. Why not pursue that ancient, ancient citadel of everything? Amen. Amen. If you see, Matthew 13 verse 11, he says, Listen, the knowledge or the secret of the kingdom of God is given only to children of God. That is why if you catch, if you have wisdom, sell everything you have right now and go and buy kingdom of God. Wealth is catching God. If you are wise, that is the costly peer. That is the Fear which was found. That is the dragnet when which the wise will be separated. I'm telling you now, go and buy the kingdom of God. Let every other thing count less. St. Paul says, I pursue, I strain, and cast, condemn every other thing. Consider every other thing as non and void, useless, in order to strain forward and know God, my Lord, alone. You see, wisdom of Paul is too great. That is the only way out. 
If there is no church anywhere in the world now, the world will go back into darkness. And that's what the aim of the devil and will not allow it. If the world now stops saying in sign of the cross, darkness will overrule the world. No knowledge of God, the devil will come back as ancient days before Adam will rule when there was darkness everywhere. It is only the word of God that is light in the world. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 and 3 to 5. The, the light was in the world, in the midst of darkness, and darkness could not quench it. If we allow COVID, if you allow it, it will blanket light, and that's the end of the world. So, wherever you are, begin to fire prayer, begin to go to church, open churches, open churches, open churches. Don't allow this darkness to reign, don't allow this darkness to overtake. Because we are children of light and we cannot dwell in the light. That's no relationship between darkness and light. So I'm calling your attention now that where the darkness starts to reign is where there is no mention about God. Where everybody is just worldly, social, and that individual looking about the athletes, the trash athletes, the mundane glories, and all that social, and that is all. We forget about God, the kenosis, the, the, the heart of it. The, the, the begin it and end it, the underquare of everything, the substratum of all that exists. We must go back and catch that man. He is the only thing. Now, let me tell you. Go down. If you go to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 2, there are seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Gifts. There are gifts, fruits of the Holy Spirit. There are gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are another gifts of Holy Spirit, gifts of healing, speaking in tongues, proclamation, and all that, as stated in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 12 to the third, that one is spiritual gift. There is also the physical gift that leads to spirit, which is stated in Isaiah 11, verse 2. Now, let me summarize it and tell you what it is. The seven gifts. Accordingly, ah, I don't know if you heard. Oniyemo sok de sa. Do you know that? First, wisdom. Second, understanding. Three, counsel. Four, fortitude. Five, knowledge. Uh, uh four, knowledge. Uh, six, piety. Seven, the fear of the Lord. You see, these are seven gifts of the Holy Spirit as we read in the church, as we are told. So, I don't know which one you have. There are two things mentioned here again that seem to be uh, conflicting. This is wisdom, understanding, and uh, uh, knowledge again. But we try to use them intersparsely. But let me try to make a little distinction between wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge, one can be knowledge of you cannot just be wise like that. Wisdom is internal. Wisdom is almost divine. It is a gratuitous, gratuitous. And to be wise, you will watch. Somebody who is wise, is wise, is internally given. But it can be developed very well. It can be known only through knowledge. And what is knowledge? Noseology. Knowledge. Kind of epistemology. You see, when you go into knowing, knowing, it is just for knowing. You can acquire knowledge by research by reading, by experience, and all that, they will accumulate. Then, the understanding of it is that you may know something without actually knowing what you know. Then, when you have acquired, known what you know, the what is left is wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to apply your knowledge justifiably. Ability to apply sound judgment is wisdom. Wisdom. Knowledge, understand it. You understand it? Because knowledge is power. And the power is your ability to apply 
soundly what you know. That's why our people say passing sense is not passing six. Passing six is not passing sense. You may know everything that you don't know God, you are just empty. You may know everything that you don't know how to apply it soundly. You have not known anything. You see, so I am calling attention today to know that God is looking for opportunity to give you wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, the fear of God, which is the beginning of sin. You don't fear God. Some people come to church to steal. Some use the name of God to make money in the sense of deceiving people, face prophets here and there. As I talk sometimes, you see people putting their phone numbers and account numbers that it is Father Okunerere talking. Uh, I want you to put this so that we use it to help motherless babies home here and there, here and there. Well, it is not true. I'm not the one talking. So, such people don't have fear of God. They don't have fear of God. You have to beg God for wisdom. Ask God for knowledge. Let me take you for, let me give you an example of myself. Why am I here today? Why am I putting on this woman gown today? Women gown, women gown. You see, I am putting it on because of God's church, not mine. I, I'm like Amos, Saint, uh, Prophet Amos, who said he was tending to his father's sheep and he was asked to come and speak. Just like me, I was somewhere in Onisha wasting away my life and junketing, joining and uh, occultic world and playing my carriage and not caring for any human being but I was arrested. Now, one day, listen to what happened. I was asked, I, I went into, from karate, I went into courtism and they gave us seven choices to make and we made a choice. They wrote there, wealth, health, knowledge, I mean wisdom, uh, good health, I mean money, uh, children, protection, fame, almost seven choices to make. And at the age of it, they were explaining those gifts. As I was going through it, I saw the wisdom. Wisdom, you go back to God's head and be one with him. It's like consciously they were teaching us this. By then, I don't know left from right. I don't know. They said it is not a cult, but uh, <laughs> you are gone. So, so, I choose that wisdom, not knowing what it meant. I then came out. I said, everybody present what you chose. Our sets, we presented money, wealth, this, that, that, that. They were happy. They would say, go and kneel down and get ready for your prayer. On getting to my tongue, I presented wisdom. The situation changed. They said, will you quickly go and change that? Who told you to choose wisdom? Don't you see wealth, money, fame, all this, and power, and all this, and children, and the long life, and all that? Don't you see them? Go and choose it. By then, my karate coach was by my side. He said, will you go and change that? I said, sir, I'm not going to change it. I chose. You people put it there. Why did you put it? And they kept it there for a day of judgment to use it against you. That you saw wisdom, you didn't choose, choose money, please be coming to our side. But unfortunately for them, fortunately for me, though unknowingly, I chose it. They did everything they could to stop me, even had my neck strangulated me, but I wriggled out of it with my karate technology and techniques. I wriggled out of the grid and told them, be careful, be careful. So the man noticed that I was not easily submitting and he said, allow me. Okay, go and eat and they poured oil that smelled like it was very stenchy. For one week, the smell of the oil didn't clean from my body. Upon the perfume I was using, it was still oozing up. When I with anger, they prayed for me to die because of choosing that thing. Do you know why they were refusing? They have other ones, fakes, but they cannot fake wisdom. The Latin adage says, Nemo, that. What non habit? Nemo that what non habit. Nobody gives what he does not possess. Yes, they didn't. They didn't have it, and they don't have it, and they will never have it. So once you are worshiping the devil, you are mad. 
you are not with your correct senses. They will feed you with fake things. So I'm calling your attention now to choose God. Do you know what happened? From that day, they knew they would lose me. After a time, God arrested me at Opel Worker, which I've always been telling you. I think I have a book here. Yes. Let me tell you. This book. I wrote it about my personal life, just like St. Augustine did his own confession of St. Augustine. This is confession of St. Paul. Yes. I'm, a saint. I'm not a saint like St. Augustine, St. Paul, and all this. So, but I confess my own here. Here you will see uh, the urgency of my life. So, it's very important. I don't know, it's in the net. This work has traveled around the world. So, you pray for understanding. Pray for understanding. Understand, for instance, when I was I was in Rome, 2008, and uh, we were eating. At the end, the our friend who hosted us, a white a white man, told me, uh, uh, "Are you satisfied?" What he was trying to tell me in English, uh, okay, but he spoke in um, Italian language. Uh, Basta, basta. I called my neighbor. Said, Why is this man calling a basta? Eh? Is this not a I'm going to hear it. He said, put up, put up, put up. But it's not, it's not causing you. He's asking you, are you feeling, are you okay? Ah, is that, you see, understanding. You need understanding, my man. You need understanding. You need to understand that this thing we're talking is right. You see, if you don't have understanding, you will not understand that these things we are saying are real. And I want you to know that what I'm speaking is real. So, now, what am I saying? Go back to God head and catch him. After a while, when God has finally arrested me and taken me, we were 15 in number. We were shared out. Five, bigger memorial seminary. Five, St. Joseph's Equator and then Seminary. Five, Seat of Wisdom Major Seminary Where? Behold, I was in the team, drifted for Seat of Wisdom. This is divine. So, I didn't know what was happening. At the end, around when I was philosophy three, I was reflecting when it came. Do you remember some days in the dark world when you chose wisdom? Here is the real wisdom. Wow, I could have because I really didn't, I forgot him. You see, that means real wisdom. There you will see Our Lady sitting down, carrying Jesus in his hand, seat of wisdom. So Mary is the seat of wisdom, who is Jesus himself. Wow, I wonder. And it happened one day, you know, you need to have wisdom, you have to need to have knowledge. Knowledge, these things you gather, sift them with wisdom, apply them well. I was going to, from school to Lagos in those days. I reached up a worker. I was to cross and move down to the first night, to the park where they have the first filling station, if a pet. On arriving there, I saw that that junction was where I used to menace people, I beat people, I strip people naked. In those days when I was with them, when I was approaching there, I know that those bad boys must still be there. As I was preaching, it was almost 8 p.m. in the night, I saw twilights. What are those twilights? Smokes. Ibo ganja. <laughs> I said, then they will. I tried to apply them just like this shrewd servant. I went by the side as if I were urinating. I did what? I rolled up my trouser up. I rolled the back of this, changed the neck of my pillow, twisted the cap, put it there, carried the bag and my bag. I was whistling. I went to them straight where they were sitting with their gun and all that. I said, hey, gentlemen, now nah, give me bone now. Nah. They said, this man, my no, come out here. We go do with you, come out. I said, give me now, now we me now. She said, Will you come out there? It's okay. I dreamed. Before I got to where there was light, I stopped and dressed well and passed. Otherwise, my bag would have gone, the little money I had would have gone, 
they thought I was not there, but I applied six, number six. <laughs> that is wisdom. God gave us this wisdom to escape so many things. Give us knowledge, give us from. If you don't have wisdom, the right knowledge, harness them. Ask God for wisdom like Solomon, and then you harness it. If we are the Solomons of today, we say, kill all our enemies. Don't kill them because if you kill all of them, nobody will be with you. And anybody who is alone in the world is an animal, is a beast. It's only a beast that can exist well alone. But man is a social animal. Man is a gregarious animal. Man cannot exist well in, without community, without a neighbor. That's why Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So I am calling your attention today that God is your thing. If you open this book, question page 31 to 34, question 12, to question 13. You will get the full gist of what happened and transpired with me in the occult kingdom. <clears throat> so, my dear brothers and sisters, God is calling you. It's not compelling you. If you like, remain a Daniel. If you like, be a con. If you like, remain a bad fish. If you like, don't be wise to buy the kingdom right now. You see, I'm putting on this. I chose wisdom. I love wisdom. Wisdom was created. Jesus is wisdom. God is wisdom. You cannot do without wisdom. Wisdom is power. So I call your attention today. Go back to God. If you are lacking this one, go back to God. He is the beginning and ending. And so God is looking for you to fill you with knowledge. From that knowledge, He will fill you with power. What does he say in Hosea? Can you read Hosea for me as a conclusion? You see, Hosea says something. Hosea was very succinct. Hosea. Hosea. Read it for me and see what is it there. Note it. Hosea 4 verse 6. Yes. He said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Hmm. They perish for lack of knowledge. Yes. You priests have refused. Oh, sir. I think that is it. You have refused knowledge. Go ahead. You priests have refused to acknowledge me and have rejected my teaching. Is it? So and so I reject you and will not acknowledge you as sons as my prayers. Even priests are asked to be wise. Lay people are asked to be wise. Don't reject knowledge. Know all the new evils and sift them and harness them by asking God for wisdom like Solomon today. Don't ask extra via. If you are asking wrongly, ask the Holy Spirit at Romans 8, 22 to 24 to come into you and ask in the language that the Lord asks so that you don't ask wrongly. Don't seek another thing. Follow the footsteps. Know ye God. Follow the things of God. Honor God. Respect God. Fear God. And wisdom will come naturally in you. May God continue to bless you. Today you have helped me. Do not hide in your heart. Seek wisdom. Jesus do it. And with your spirit. May we write? I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of men. Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things we are made, for all us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified upon the Father's part. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and the sin now will have no end. I live in the Holy Spirit, the Lord giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is God and glorified, who have spoken through the prophets. I believe in one and only Catholic and Apostle of the Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the Faithful My brothers and sisters, we share a priceless treasure which is our faith with confidence we ask God our Father for all the, gra the graces to live out that faith in today's world. Our response shall be in your wisdom Lord deepen our faith. In your wisdom Lord, in our faces. In your wisdom, Lord, in our faith. In your wisdom, Lord, in has been commissioned to proclaim. And may she encourage all her members to model their lives on Jesus Christ. Lord, special wisdom from God on how to descend between good and evil and so reflect God's plan for the human race. Lord, in our faith, in your wisdom, Lord, in our faith. For writers and poets, who suffer for their Christian faith. May they continue to share their spiritual insights with others and encourage the free world by their gallant and heroic faith, which refuses to be silenced by threats or imprisonment. Lord, in the name of faith, in your faith within the community, in all the changes which life in the church brings. May we have a deep and strong faith which knows how to renew the hallow and how to renew practices of our religion. Lord, in our faith, in your wisdom, Lord, we make our prayers in silence to God our Father, trusting in His infinite wisdom and love. We pray in, our, in silence our private intentions.
We pray with Mary, seat of wisdom, by saying, Hail Mary, for of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for the sinners, now and for the power of our death. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we beg of your mercy the gift of wisdom to know your will and the grace to fulfill it. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. present world of life and lead us to eternal gladness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Holy Spirit. Let us live, live up your earth. We will lead them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to us. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the worldliness that is us, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of our holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gates we pray by sending thy spirit upon them that you do for. So that they may become for us the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when Sapa was in it, he took the chalice and once more giving things, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and charities of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with our Pope Francis and our Bishop Godfrey, Yona, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of the faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Thou with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, our spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us in confidence pray to the Father and the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Behold the Lamb of God. 
beauty would take some way the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not only that you sat down under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.